This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morris, and this week we're talking about the Bates women's basketball team's best start to a season in 11 years. Plus, women swimming and diving won a sixth straight main state meet, and both squash teams defeated rival Bowdoin. All that and more are coming up on the Bates Bobcast. <laughs> With its 6-1 and one start, the women's basketball team is getting national attention as the squad received votes in the latest D3Hoops.com Top 25 poll. The Bobcats defeated number 4 nationally ranked Bowdoin 74-70 on Wednesday behind a game-high 30 points from Megan Graff. The Bobcats followed that up with a 79-45 win over Clark University on Saturday. Sophomore Morgan Kennedy had 12 points against Bowdoin and drained six three-pointers, one shy of the program record against Clark. Kennedy was named the Maine Rookie of the Week by the Maine Women's Basketball Coaches Association, and she is our female Bobcat of the Week. Happy to have Morgan Kennedy with us here on the Bobcast talking some women's hoops. And Morgan, first of all, take us through your you know high school basketball experience. Growing up in Oklahoma, how did Bates first get on your radar? I knew I wanted to go somewhere where academics would be a priority, and um, I just eventually met um, our old coach, assistant coach Christina and coach Montgomery through the recruiting process and then came to camp and stuff and everything just seemed like a great fit, like the team and the coaching and just, yeah, like everybody would always ask like why Maine it's so far. Like I've never really been up here, up east like that and it's just really beautiful campus. Everybody up here is just like really nice and it just, I knew it was something I wanted to be a part of. Obviously, last year you got to play a grand total of two games. So <laughs> tell us about that transition coming to college, having to deal with everything we had to go through last year. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't so good. Like, we didn't get the full experience of anything. But, like, to take it for what it's worth, like, at least we had, like, a little stepping stone to, like, gradually integrate into college and stuff. So even though we didn't get a lot of chances to do what we normally would have done, at least, like we had two games like at least we got to we didn't have real practices and stuff and we, it was hard with all the COVID guidelines but we got to spend time together and I think that year really like helped us decide like what we wanted to do this year and everything we do this year we think back to last year about like how how much better we have it now so I think that's a good like way to motivate us. And the team obviously off to a great start, 6-1 and one on the year. Take us back to that Wednesday game at Bowdoin. They were ranked fourth in the country coming in. You got the victory. What was the key to the success, in your opinion, in that game? I thought one of the major keys like for us and something that we talk about as a team a lot is playing the whole 40 minutes of the game and um, just no breaks and just going as hard as we can for those 40 minutes. And I think that's something we did. And, yeah, it was it was really fun to be a part of that. And then for you, hitting six three-pointers here the other day against Clark, five of them, I think, in the third quarter, right? Yeah. What, what was clicking there? Um, I'm not sure. It was just really like, – I hit one, and then just hearing my team get hyped for me, that was – that's one thing that's, like, great about our program, just the way, like, our team is. It's just they really got me going, and, yeah. How about having your twin sister on the team, Allison Kennedy? What's that like? Um, it's nice just because, like – we know each other so well and it's also good like coming so far from home just to have that little piece of home here too so it makes everything easier it's really fun when you were in high school were you both like we're definitely going to go to the same college or it was not sure um it was kind of like just whatever happens happens we weren't really stuck on one thing but then we both really liked Bates and then it ended up working out so now we're here so the team obviously having as I mentioned having a really great start I mean What's what makes this team so special so far in your opinion? What what makes this group unique? We definitely have great leadership on our team um, and accountability. Like we are all we all know we all have a goal for this team and we all know what this team could do. And we have great like our seniors and our captains. Like they really like keep us on track with our goals and same with our coaches. So, what's it like playing alumni gym? Oh my gosh, it gets so loud. It's so, it's so nice. I, it's, cause like last year we got to play one game in right. it and it was the, like just seeing the bleachers out this year and the stands full, it's so nice to be a part of it. 
The women's swimming and diving team won a sixth consecutive Maine State meet over the weekend with 10 different Bobcats taking home state titles. First year, Sophie Castley led the way, winning the 100 backstroke and 200 backstroke. She was also part of the 200 and 400 freestyle winning relays. And her 50-yard backstroke was second in the state, but the fastest ever by a Bobcat. Castley is a fan of the team aspect of collegiate swimming. When you're looking at colleges, what made Bates the place for you? So Bates is Division Three, which I really liked. I did not want to go big D1 school. And Bates, academically, is probably the best college I was looking at. And when I was talking to PC and Vanessa, they really helped me choose Bates because of the team orienting and how they talked about goals as a team, not so much as individual sport, which I really liked because I come from a club team that was very much set on individual goals and how, um, I don't know, not so much of just the team aspect, which I really wanted in college. So that must have been a fun meet this past weekend there, at competing against other schools in Maine as a team and, and getting that victory. What was the experience like for you? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, we came into the meet not expecting to have a blowout win, which we did, which is really surprising. It was really great. We had a lot of goals going into it just to, you know, go best times and win. And it was a lot of fun just cheering everyone on. We got two individual state titles and two relays, right? Yeah. I know a lot of people in swimming, they really love the relays the most. Are, are you, are you oh, like yeah. that? Yeah. Relays are so much fun. Um, for me, I'm normally doing backstroke on the relays, but I got put in a bunch of freestyle relays, which was something I don't normally do. So it was really, really fun. Yeah, so your background is more backstroke. I am. How did you get involved with those events in particular? Um, my club team, like I said, it was more focused on individuals. So... In practice, we would work on specialty strokes, which is not based on freestyle. So I'd always do backstroke. So I got really, really good at backstroke. And freestyle is just something at Bates you focus a lot on. But you also do work on your specialty strokes as well. Great. And then what's it like, the adjustment so far to college swimming compared to club? It's pretty easy. The preseason definitely helped a lot with getting in the routine of waking up early and balancing the academics of Bates College. Um, in high school, I did not struggle academically as much as I, it's here. It's really, really hard. But um, PC and Vanessa help a lot with um, balancing between the sport and your schoolwork. Yeah, how have you been able to try to achieve that balance? I mean, this is being your first semester as a college student. My advisor. Uh-huh is really, really helpful with um, working out my class schedule, and she knows I'm an athlete, and most of, there's a lot of athletes in my class, so she's very helpful. And PC says, you always, school comes before swim, and it's really helpful because in high school it was more the opposite, where swim mm-hmm. always came before academics. <laughs> And so that switch, uh, um, it's finals week, obviously, so how's it been going for you? (laughs) Right. Um, Coming off the weekend, I had already finished three of my finals, and I just had to take one in person today, and now I'm officially done with the semester. There you go. Yeah. uh, Growing up, how did you first start swimming competitively? Because I I feel like a lot of people, you know, learn how to swim, but there's a next level where you're learning to compete, right? Right. So I lived in a part of New Hampshire where we weren't close to the beach, And so my parents always wanted us to learn how to swim. And so I learned at a very young age, around like two or something, how to swim. And then I've told her brothers who got into the sport just to try it. And so I got put in it with my twin sister as um, just for kicks and giggles. But um, me and my twin sister were the only ones in my family that actually stuck with it. And why did you decide to stick with it? What made, what made you enjoy it? I had a lot of friends growing up. And as you grow up through the sport, you get really close to those friends. And it made it a lot easier to stay with it, even when it got hard. Terrific. And then um, do you have any goals in your mind for you know, kind of the rest of the year? Because you have a train trip coming up, and then the dual meets start in January. Right. So we're going in NESCAX this year. And previously, two years ago, we got fourth overall in the women's. And this year, we really want to get third. And as a freshman, I think it would be really cool to get some more NCAA times. So you've been studying the history a little bit of bait swimming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And what have you heard about training trip? Because I know people, um, it's an interesting experience right down in Florida. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. Um, I hear there's a lot of team bonding that happens. And I want to get closer as a class, as as freshmen. And... 
I think I heard the practices are really hard, but I'm not really worried about that because you have so much downtime. And I think that's where I'm mostly excited for. Yeah, so what's this first year group like? Oh, we're awesome. <laughs> um, we're a smaller group compared to the upperclassmen. But I think that just makes us become really closer and have a lot of team experiences together, which upperclassmen never, didn't really get because of COVID. And then we touched on the fact that you um, were part of four state titles over the weekend. Any race in particular stand out to you? I would say my 200 back just because I went one second off my personal best time, which was set in my junior year of high school. Okay. And I haven't really had an experience since COVID to get like a chance to race it again. So with a chance like Main State where we suited up and everything – um, it was really exciting to get close and to make the NCAA cut time. Yeah, did COVID really mess up your senior year in terms of swimming? Or, I mean, because you, you could probably swim individually a little bit, right? Right. So, individually, we did go to a travel meet in mm-hmm. West Virginia, but it was it was long course, so it didn't really help necessarily with individual times coming into college because it's just short course. Gotcha. And so... Um, but getting back in the swing of things, it sounds like it's been a good experience so far. Yeah, I love it. Excellent. Well, any other thoughts you want to share about the Main State meet and any goals you have? Coming off a big win, we're all super stoked. And I'm really excited to see where the season goes because it was so early in the season. And coming off a training trip and coming back early in January really helped things get moving. Excellent. Sophie Castley, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Thank you for having it. me. The men's swimming and diving team placed third at the main state meet, entering fewer competitors than rivals Bowden and Colby. A pair of Bobcats won state titles, with junior Nathan Berry winning the 100-yard backstroke in a meet record time of 50.16 seconds and the 100-yard freestyle in 46.5 seconds. Nathan Berry is our male Bobcat of the week, and he was thrilled to get back to competition. After a year away from competition, what's it been like to finally get back in the pool swimming against other people? <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. I mean... That's, that's actually one of the toughest things is, you know, you're swinging all these people across the country are really tapering and even shaving sometimes for these mid-season meets, which usually doesn't happen. But since people haven't done a full-on taper meet in like two years, people forget how to do it. It's, it's a really tough mental challenge to get through a whole meet and, and stay on top of it the whole time. So it's, it's really exciting, and we're seeing a lot of fast times right now way faster than we saw mid-season in 2019. So it's really exciting. I'm excited to see what happens uh, at the end of the year. Yeah, I've seen like all sorts of meet records and stuff this past weekend. I mean, uh, it, it was a pretty fast pool, it sounds like. That pool is really fast. Um, and, you know, all, all the teams that were there were swimming a lot faster than they were two years ago. So we have gotten some great freshmen and sophomores, and Colby and Bowden have also gotten some really fast freshmen and sophomores so we've got three great teams, and it'll we'll have to see what happens at NESCAX. We'll battle it out. Yeah, this is kind of like an introduction to what you have kind of mm-hmm. ahead, right? Kind of a, a preview of what you're going to see, not only at NESCAX, but also in dual meets, right, after New Year? Oh, certainly, yeah, because yeah, we're going to face Bowden and Colby both in dual meets. Right. And uh, in 2019, we Bates men won the CBB title, which means we beat both That's Bowden right. and Colby in dual meets. In dramatic and, fashion, right? In dramatic fashion, yeah. and, uh, and we beat them at NESCAX. But that is by no means guaranteed this year. They've, they've got some really quick people, and they've got a lot more depth uh, than we were expecting, you know. So it'll, we'll have to see what, what happens. You've got a training trip coming up for half the team. They've never been on training trip, right? What do you tell them about what to expect? Oh, well, that's, it's a super fun time. I mean, yeah, it is a little bit tough because <laughs> the only time I've been on training trip was freshman year. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a lot happened between then and now. All I remember is that it's really hard and really fun at the same time. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, long course training. Um, so, you know, morning and afternoon long course meters, so like a 50 meter pool. Yeah. And we're going to be kind of relegated this year. So it's a little bit difficult to tell them exactly what to expect because of COVID policy. We're, we're not going out as much and doing as many things, but we're going to, there's a lot of team bonding that happens and uh, it'll be really fun. And then tell us about some of the events you swam in this past weekend. Sure. So I did uh, the 50 backstroke and 100 backstroke and 100 freestyle. So I only did one individual event and one relay per session mm-hmm. uh, to kind of mimic what's going to happen in NESCAX. And I swam a lot faster in all of those events than I did mid-season last year mm. at Main State Meet 
sorry, not last year, but 2019 right. at Maine State in 2019. And I was about half a second off my best time in the 50s that I swam and about a second off my best time in the 100s that I swam, which is a really good point to be in because you drop uh, about a second uh, to a second and a half with a full taper, a full shave at the end of the year. So things are looking good for, for me personally and for a lot of people on the team as well. Uh, I know you talked to, to Edmund Jung yes. recently. He had a great meet this, this weekend as well. Yeah, he also won a state championship. That's cool to see, right? Yeah, he, he won two, two of them. Yeah, two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he's uh, less than a second off the B-cup for the 100 fly, actually. He was, he was very excited about that. So he's made kind of a leap this year. Are any other your teammates who you're, you know, really stood out this weekend, you think? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, well, let's see. Darren Waterland had a fantastic split on the 200 free relay. He went like 20.6 or something, which is crazy. Uh, Will Dewey, uh, sophomore, has been dropping a lot of time since he came in. He actually walked on his freshman year, and he's, he's dropped a crazy amount of time. Uh, we've got, we got fast people coming up all over the place. Excellent. Well, any other thoughts you want to share about the main state meet and what you're looking forward to in 2022 once you get back to competition here? 2022, it'll be exciting to see because, um, you know, Bowden and Colby both swam uh, their swimmers in a lot more events than we did. Right. So that's on one side of that, they scored more points because their swimmers swam more events. But on the other side, their swimmers were more tired than us because they were swimming more events. Mm -hmm. So they may have swam, you know, slower than we did in some events. So exactly how that'll balance out right. is going to be very exciting to see in both a dual meet and a championship meet fashion. Uh, hopefully we'll try to hold on to that, that CBB title as the men's team, but uh, it'll, it'll be a battle for sure. The squash teams both defeated Bowdoin by a count of 6-3 to three on Thursday. Although the women and men fought a tough and training the next two days, there were some standout performances. On the women's side, sophomore Andy Martagone, competing at the number one position as a rookie, won her matches against opponents from Tufts and Bowdoin, respectively. She tells us how she first got started competing in squash and her journey to Bates. Happy to have Andy Martagone with us here on the Bobcast, talking some women's squash. And Andy, first of all, give us a sense of your background growing up. When did you start playing squash and how did you decide to come to Bates? I started playing squash when I was 12 years old. I started playing in Mexico. My dad actually introduced me to squash. So then me and my brother started playing. Um, then it got competitive. <laughs> um, so I started playing junior tournaments and then college now. <laughs> What led you to Bates, though? Because obviously you mentioned you grew up in Mexico. Yes. So I first got recruited for, like, boarding school. And then from there, I got recruited to Bates. That was that was the main goal, to come to college here. Gotcha. What about Bates appealed to you? Well, so I knew the the new coach, Rai, mm -hmm. because I used to play with him at Chelsea Pierce, where he worked before. <laughs> so then he told me, like, hey, I just... Uh, I'm going to be a coach at Bates, so you should you should come. You should apply. And I knew Rai for a long time, so I knew it was going to be a good opportunity. He's an amazing coach, so I'm really happy I came here. Oh, okay. So you've had experience working with Rai in the past at Chelsea yeah. Piers. What did you kind of learn from him, you know, you know, when you were developing as a squash player before you got to college, I guess? Um, well, he's really experienced at squash. He's from South Africa, and he also played juniors. Um, I'm not sure if he played professional, but I knew from the beginning that it, it was going to be a great opportunity to come here because he knows a lot about squash, so I was going to be able to improve a lot. <laughs> yeah, so you're a sophomore. Yes. But you didn't get a you didn't get a season last year. So how uh, did you how did you work to continue to develop your game when there wasn't any competition? It was so unfortunate because I was very excited, but then still, we didn't really have a season. But he would still coach us, which was good as well because I know coaches aren't allow us allowed to coach us during the season. So we had a chance to work with him still, and um, it it went pretty well. I would say it was definitely. Really unfortunate that we didn't get to compete, but then we also took it as like, like more motivation, I guess, for like next season. We would be counting like we have this week's left until next year to like compete, whatever. So like, it definitely, it definitely helped. We did a lot. What's it like playing number one in your first year of college squash? <laughs> um, 
It's it's really fun. Um, Rye likes to call it the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I just take it like I have nothing to lose. Like sometimes I'll play like this professional like PSA players. Like she's like number thirty in the world or something crazy like that. So I'm like just there having fun. Like like I literally have nothing to lose if I get some points. Like that's good, and it's just experience for like future matches. Yeah, that's interesting because I mean it has been a tough schedule to start the year, right? A yeah. couple of <laughs> Ivy League opponents. Obviously, Trinity's yeah. always tough. So I mean. It's a matter of improving, you know, the small victories kind of against against some of these opponents, right? Because, I mean, yeah. you, you know coming in, their players are all highly ranked. Yes, yes. And you kind of know them from junior squash mm-hmm. because we all played, like, junior tournaments. So you'll know this person from this college, this one's from the other one. Like, sometimes you'll play your opponent from, like, all your junior matches. So it's going to be, like, again, the battle, which is also really fun. <laughs> when you go from junior squash to college, now you're not only playing for yourself, you're doing it for your team. And maybe sometimes you won't get the win, but then your other teammates will back you up, and then you'll still get, like, the win overall. So I feel like that's really cool. Well, I'm curious, like, this past week, you you played Bowdoin at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, both the women and the men got a victory. That must have been a great night. What was that night like as a f- your first home match as a as a Bobcat, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the first one, and it's really fun because both teams, like men's and women's, like really support each other. So we'll be cheering for the other team because sometimes we'll play at the same time. But for example, for Trinity, we played first, so then they were cheering up for us. And then more people from Bates, like, friends, like, come and, like, watch. And so, like, it's really fun. Like, everyone's cheering. Then, like, even though we lost against Trinity, like, like the energy was there. So I was going to say, you had three matches in three days. Yeah. I mean, and, and you had a bunch of effort in Philadelphia also. But is that different from juniors? Where it, is it more mm, spread out or similar? No. Actually, juniors, I would say it's even more mm. intense okay. because you would have – two matches in a single day Mm -hmm. and the matches will be like hard so here i would say i wouldn't say it's more chill but it's like a little bit less like intense Mm. because you'll have like a day in between matches um but it's still the same vibe (laughs) and it's good to know that you have your team backing you up right yeah 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 no we i feel like we were getting along a lot because last year we didn't have a season, so we would hang out. But then this year we're really, like, together. And it's really good. I feel like it really helps a lot. Like, also, like, when we're playing, like, we're cheering out for each other. So that's that's a really good thing. Bates, of course, has the glass court, which has to be yeah. fun to play on. Um, it's different, though. I mean, it's got to be a different experience than playing on one of the other courts, right? Um, yeah. So I feel like we kind of ha- have, like, an advantage. Because whenever we play home matches, not all colleges have a glass court. So then they go in there and it's like they have to adjust to the cord. Like it's it's like a lot of factors. And also for the live streaming and stuff, like it's really fun to have the glass <laughs> cord. I I personally liked a lot playing there. Excellent. Well, any other thoughts you want to share about the season so far? Maybe some goals you have in your mind for the team and for yourself going forward? Um, I would say for the team, obviously have like a winning season. Um, probably be schools that are ranked higher than us. And just personally, like, I feel like just getting better, like, um, it's really different from junior squash. So then, like, I guess, um, like trying to play competitive and, like, still win for your team. All right. Sounds good. Andy Martigon, thank you so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. For the men's squash team, senior captain Peter Koenigsbauer continues his rise with wins at the number four position over his opponents from Bowdoin and Tufts. Born and raised in Seattle, Koenigsbauer talks about how he ended up in the northeast corner of the country at Bates. So I went to a boarding school when I was in seventh grade and picked up the sport uh, because it was something sports needed throughout the school year. I played soccer in the fall and baseball in the spring, but I didn't really play a winter sport. So I was choosing between skiing where it was five degrees outside and didn't really want to do that um hockey didn't know how to skate and not really much of an interest for basketball and i discovered squash sort of an indoor racket sport like how hard could this be um so i tried it out for a year but then really got into it i would say two or three years later um i had uh came home and really got interested in um 
met a coach who happened to be in Seattle and one of the best coaches in the country was very fortunate enough to be able to get involved with him, uh, Azam Khan, and his family who's very much involved with the sport um, out in the West Coast. So that was a really great opportunity for me to actually get exposed to the sport, learn more about it besides just hitting the ball from one wall to the other. Um, from there, I went to a high school called Berkshire School in Western Massachusetts and really started to play more at a competitive level with aspirations for playing in college. Bates was definitely one of the schools I was considering earlier on and uh, something that uh, could be something certainly to strive for because the program was so strong and something to be a part of for sure. So I played at Berkshire for three years from 10th grade until my uh, 12th grade senior year. And from there, I was fortunate enough to come to Bates, uh, get involved in the program, and it's been an amazing experience so far. I considered a couple other schools, but I've been very, very happy with where I am right now. As a senior captain, um, what's that experience been like so far being one of the, you know, the, the team leaders this year? It's been a really amazing opportunity. Um, I've been very fortunate to work with uh, Jesper, who's my co-captain, um, Coach Rye, who's been with the program since my sophomore year. We have a really great group this year. And for me to be a part of the program and the direction that it's heading, um, it's an honor for me. We certainly have a lot of young talent on our team with uh, four new incoming players. We had five new incoming players last year who just played their first college match two weeks ago. So essentially we have nine players who've never played a college match coming into the season. So there's certainly a lot of responsibility for both myself and Jesper. Um, I think the team is certainly heading in the right direction as far as the work we've put in. Um, so for me to be a small part of that, it's been a really incredible opportunity. Terrific. And then obviously the team challenged themselves early in the year. Coach Rye had you going up against some Ivy League opponents there in Philadelphia. What was the experience like competing against, you know, those Ivy League teams? And you know, I know you play trendy every year, but obviously it's, it's uh, uh, extra uh, challenging this season, I guess, right? I would say so, yeah. I mean, those are the best schools in the country. So for us to be able to play them and to play multiple schools, not just one where we would play Trinity every year, and that was sort of the big match, but with schools like Columbia, Penn, Cornell, in addition to Trinity on the schedule, it allows us to play, as I said, the best schools in the country, and that's the best way for this program to get even stronger. So that on top of already challenging matches with schools like Williams and Middlebury, um, and then some other schools in the NESCAC that have really been up and coming the last couple of years, Tufts, Bowdoin, Amherst, uh, Colby for sure. So it's been great to sort of play a lot of different types of matches that maybe we wouldn't have played my first year or two. Um, so the schedule definitely has changed, and I think for the better, and again, allowing us to play the very best teams, and hopefully this continues for many more years. And the Bowdoin match, which was last week um, at home, Bowdoin for the men's actually came in ranked higher than you, but the men got the victory. It must have been pretty satisfying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We, I remember we played them two years ago and came up short 5-4. So uh, for the guys who were a part of that loss two years ago, it was definitely great to redeem ourselves in that match. We played very well across the board, even though our top six were the ones who won. Our guys across the board, one through nine, all played quite well and did everything they could. Um, Jesper had a big match at number one to close it out. Mm -hmm. Alec had a big match at number two. Um, Harris had a big match. So many other guys played really, really well. Um, so it was great to see a lot of that hard work come together whether it's the 6 a.m. practices, the late practices, the coming in between classes to try to get on court. So it was really rewarding in that sense to see all that hard work come together. But we also recognize that we have more that we can do when we come back in January. And then you personally got a victory the next day uh, at Tufts there, but that's obviously tough to go from one match, then a road match, then back home again. I mean, the young guys probably learn pretty quickly what's it like uh, in cleat squash, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's hard in that sense because to have a big win against Bowden and then to be able to back that up that next day, that's very difficult to do. Um, my sophomore year and freshman year also, that was certainly a challenge where we would have a big match and then to summon the energy again the next day to – put it again on display and play the very best. It's really difficult to do both from a mental and physical standpoint. And I think we certainly had a big learning experience against Tufts where we did not play our best squash. 
that next day afterwards. So we were pretty disappointed, but I think it's an important lesson to learn now early in the season when we play schools like Williams and Middlebury back-to-back days or the NESCAC tournament or nationals where we will be playing matches consecutively over a certain number of days. So to get that out of the way early in the season is good. It's obviously disappointing we didn't get the win, but we'll see them again at some point. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's exhausting, right, squash? I mean, like, people, people might not realize that, but I mean, it's a small court, but you're running all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> you're sprinting for however long the match goes, um, and it is physically demanding. That's why we do all that work in the yeah. off season. Um, and, yeah, just making sure that the bodies are – really ready to go before each match. What have you personally been working on in your game? Um, I think for me, one of my strengths has been my fitness. So trying to build off of that and be a little more attacking than I would have been a couple years ago. I think my ability to volley has certainly improved in the last couple of months and year. Um, And because of that, I've been able to play at a much higher pace. And from there, having more options when my opponent's under more pressure and putting the ball in the middle of the court, but having the ability to go short and move my opponent to different parts of the court as opposed to more or less the back two corners, which is something um, I've really focused on over the last couple of months. How cool is it to have your brother on the team? It's pretty cool. This is actually not the first time we've been on the same team. When I was at Berkshire, we overlapped by a year. So that was certainly a fun season. And for us to overlap by two years here was great. Obviously, no matches right. last year, which would have been fun, but he did get in, uh, into the lineup this weekend for uh, a couple matches, which is pretty cool. So for me to finish my match and then go over to the next court and see him on court playing, it was pretty cool. And so with me, this being my last year at Bates, um, I don't know, it's pretty special to, to have that at the same time, for sure. And for my parents, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, what are your thoughts you wanted to share about, you know, your time at Bates so far and the season so far and what your goals are going forward, kind of? Yeah, for sure. I think we definitely want to get ranking-wise probably within that top 16, sort of into that next division for qualifying for nationals, which we've been close with for the last couple of years but haven't quite managed to break through. So that's probably our ultimate goal. Um, Williams and Middlebury are two of our – more important matches as far as the rankings MIT will be important as well so those matches we need to take care of business on those days and going into the NESCAC tournament obviously for us to have the opportunity to play a school like Trinity in the final would be a really cool story them being as historic as they are within the sport and where they're still ranked today and having us played them two years ago and to see the highest level of squash that there is with, uh, within the collegiate level, to see that again in the final and have another opportunity against them would be pretty special. All right, Peter Koningsbauer, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks. The men's basketball team fell Friday in a non-conference game by a score of 78-72 to rival Colby, despite a double-double from junior Omar Saar, who matched his career high with 19 rebounds. The Bobcats get a chance to bounce back Saturday when they host Bowdoin in non-conference action at 3 p.m. Then the men and women will visit Husson on Monday before breaking for the holidays. We'll hoop it up with our final episode before the new year next time on the Bates Bobcast. Thank <laughs> you.